I wonder if you've seen something in a new light. After finding out something, you have changed your perspective. Even what you had thought had changed. Now for me, I love watching movies with a twist in them. And when the twist is revealed, you see the whole movie in this new light. You get this insight into characters that you didn't see, and finally pieces of the story come together. Seeing something in a new light, it gives you a new perspective. It changes your thoughts and actions. Now on our mountain this week, that's exactly what happens with the disciples. They see their friend and teacher, Jesus, in a new light. They gain a new perspective of him, which makes clear for them who Jesus is and what Jesus has come to do. I want to challenge you this week for you to see Jesus in a new light. And at this point, when we hear the word mountain, we know big things are going to happen. We've seen God reveal himself to Moses and Moses saw God's glory. And Elijah on top of a mountain heard the gentle whisper of God's voice. And now this week, we have this moment between Jesus and a few of his disciples on a mountain. And we could say that this is some of the biggest things that we've seen on a mountaintop so far. So what happened? Well, Jesus took the inner circle of his disciples up the mountain. And whilst he was there, Jesus transfigured or transformed right before their very eyes. Verse two tells us, and he was transfigured before them and his face shone like the sun and his clothes became white as light. Imagine being one of Jesus' friends and seeing this right before their eyes. Why don't you chuck a react in the comments next to us uh, of what might be running through your head. So what is happening here? As I read this picture, it reminds me of a scene from a movie called The Man with the Iron Mask. Now a prisoner is kept in a prison and in an iron mask for many years. <clears throat> After being busted out of prison, his mask is finally removed. And it's actually no prisoner, it's not even a commoner, but the true king is revealed. The king who should be bowed down and worshiped. And this is what's happening in this picture of Jesus. Jesus is unmasking himself to reveal his glory. He's unveiling his true self. By getting a glimpse of Jesus's glory, his past, present and future glory. Jesus is showing us his divine self. A picture of purity who shone so bright, he looked like the sun. His clothes were pure white. I wonder, have you ever stared at a light for a really long time? And as soon as you look away, you get those like weird blob things. Well, the disciples only a few meters away are staring at the brightest light, like the sun. They are witness to Jesus and his magnificent glory. The disciples who'd lived, slept and eaten with Jesus are now seeing his true self, the divine glory of God in person. So why is Jesus revealing his glory? And why at this moment? For us to answer this, we need to think about who appeared on the mountain with Jesus, Moses and Elijah. Now we know by these, <clears throat> now we know by now, these guys are experts when it comes to mountaintop experiences. They are long gone before Jesus's time. So what are they doing here? Well, Moses is the greatest of God's lawgivers and Elijah is the greatest of God's word speakers. These guys are really big deals. And so on their own, they deserve the respect uh, and attention. So why does it mean that they are here with Jesus, standing in his glory? Well, last lockdown, I watched The Last Dance, a documentary about the final season of the Chicago Bulls, an NBA basketball team. Now, even though the documentary is about a team, it's really about one guy, Michael Jordan. An episode on Scottie Pippen, a member of the team, soon turns into an episode about Michael Jordan. Moses and Elijah are like the Chicago Bulls team. All their episodes are about someone even greater. These guys have been pointing everyone towards Jesus. Everything they did was rolling out the red carpet for the star who was promised to come. And Jesus is that star. <clears throat> Jesus is the promised one these guys pointed to, and they represented the two great parts of the Old Testament. 
the law and the prophets. But here they are showing Jesus is the climax, the one who supersedes them. Jesus is the exact representation of God and we should listen to him. <clears throat> if these guys turning up weren't enough, uh, God's voice is heard. We only hear God's voice twice in the New Testament, at Jesus' baptism and here. So you know it's a big deal. And verse five says, this is my beloved son who I'm well pleased. Listen to him. God declares Jesus his son, the chosen one, the Messiah, whom he loves and he tells us to listen to him. All while Moses and Elijah are standing in his presence. God is declaring Jesus above the one who gave the God's law, the one who called Israel to repent and turn back to God. Jesus does both in an even greater way. And so therefore we're called to listen to him. Well, when the disciples lifted their eyes, they only saw Jesus. They were told to tell no one until after his resurrection. What do you mean tell no one? If I have a weird dream, I have to quickly rush to tell at least someone, let alone have this crazy experience of seeing Jesus' glory. Well, the clue is until after the resurrection. Jesus gave a select few a glimpse of his glory, but in a few chapters later, he reveals to many his glory in his death and resurrection. Just before this scene, Jesus has revealed that, the, that he has to suffer many things and die, but he'll rise again. And when we get to the cross, we see the glory revealed in surprising ways. Jesus takes the sin of the whole world on his shoulders. At the cross, Jesus takes the beatings, the mockings and pain to achieve salvation for us, for those who put their trust in Jesus. But death isn't the end. In an act which only God could do, Jesus is raised from the dead. His glory is shown in the victory over death. Jesus' glory is revealed to us uh, to show he is God who has come to rescue us all through his death and resurrection. This doesn't diminish his light, rather it is brighter than ever as we see God demonstrate his power. The disciples saw Jesus in a new light. They saw the Messiah in all his splendor and majesty. They saw a glimpse of Jesus in the future. The very Jesus they saw in splendor and majesty displayed his glory to the world in his death and resurrection. I wonder if you've seen Jesus in a new light. I think we are very familiar with Jesus, the suffering servant, but the glimpse of Jesus' glory we see here shows us he's so much more than the suffering servant. Jesus is filled with divine glory. So do you see Jesus as God with all his glory? Revelation 1 tells us of the vision of when Jesus returns. One like a son of man, clothed with a long robe and with a golden sash around his chest. The hairs of his head were white, like white wool, like snow. His eyes like a flame of fire, and his feet were like burnished bronze, refined in a furnace, and his voice was like the roar of many waters. In his right hand he held seven stars from his mouth, came a sharp two-edged sword, and his face was like the sun, shining in full strength. John saw a glimpse of Jesus' glory on the mountain, his vision of, <clears throat> and he has a vision of his future glory here. And at this time, John fell on his face like a dead man. The true glory of Jesus is even greater than the glory on the mountain. We have a snippet of what's to come in Matthew, but this vision is like a trailer, and the full picture is so much more glorious. The disciples on the mountain didn't get the full picture and neither will we until we see Jesus face to face. Jesus is the glorious one who suffered to bring many to life. And so as we think about Jesus, we need to view him in this new light, which he reveals himself to us. As you reflect on how you think about Jesus, maybe you need to expand your view on Jesus to be the one who will come with the face shining like the sun with all of God's glory. Or maybe you need to come and put your trust in Jesus, the one who reveals himself to be glorious with all splendor and majesty, who went and suffered on the cross for you to have life. If you already have this picture of Jesus, can I encourage you to continue worshiping the mighty God who suffered in our place and whom we will one day see in all his splendor and majesty. 
Well, this week on the mountaintop, we've seen Jesus in a new light. We've seen the glory of Jesus revealed. Have you seen Jesus in a new light?